because they grow so much. When we first got our caterpillars, do you remember they were skinny and small? Yeah. And now they're kind of like fat and chunky and big, huh? <laughs> they're kind of cute now. They're chunky. Looks like going long. You're a storyteller. Okay, Gladys thinks. Rattle. And then they hypnotize. That's a cobra. That is something that could ruin their day. I wonder what's going to happen next. Readers make predictions. Predictions. Hold up, hold up. Whoa! Hi, sweet friend. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Maylene Call from Mrs. Call's Campers. Welcome to another week in the life of a teacher. This year I teach kindergarten and first grade, so if you're new, make sure to subscribe. Also, check out my full playlist of vlogs this year. I've vlogged every single week this year. I have like 32. Well, you can tell because the title of the video is probably number 33. I have tons of vlogs from this year teaching kindergarten and first grade. Um, it is a combo class and it's been really interesting to kind of see how that develops. Today is Monday. It is May 2nd. It's the start of Teacher Appreciation Week, which I am very excited about. But it's also, again, it's a little bittersweet. We're here at the end of the year, and that is absolutely wild. Today is May 2nd. Yesterday was May 1st, which is Principal's Day. I wanted to do something small for my principal just to, like, do something. I sent him, like, a text message and, like, let him know, like, thank you for X, Y, Z, whatever. But I wanted to do something from, like, me and the kids. And I was trying to think of what to do. And, like, last week I had them all write him cards, but that ended up being just, like, a hot mess because when you give kids free reign to just, like, make a card they either go like way too far out and they fold it 700 times or they like do the bare minimum and I'm like okay we need to do something a little bit nicer I didn't want to make him anything big so I was like if he wanted to keep it he would not be able to keep it easily so what I decided to do was oh also I got I bought this book from Amazon it's called what would you do in a book about you and I thought this would be great again for non-realistic fiction because it just talks about things that they can do don't ask me where I got the gummy bear idea from I have no idea it just popped in my head I was like oh it'll be small and perfect. I'm gonna laminate. This is the cover. We are very thankful for you. And I made, I like wrote him a little note on one. I typed it up and then I printed like the different colored gummy bears. I'll put this in the link in my bio for free for you guys. Um, because you could use this as a gift for like a para or an aide or a like a room mom and I like literally got him gummy bears. I'm gonna see if I can find like a gift bag <laughs> and tissue paper and just like give him something simple and like a little ring because I don't really want to laminate all of them in case he doesn't want to like keep it forever and ever, you know what I mean? Which I don't blame people for not keeping things forever and ever. The sentiment of receiving something <laughs> is often enough but I figured just in case for some reason just in case if you wanted to keep it it would be small and it would be easy to keep that was my goal I mean let's be honest I'm here early got here at like 7 a.m. this morning because I want to get prepared for this week <laughs> I have not been doing I'm just being honest with you guys it is May it was April I have not been doing a good job at coming in and being ready for the week just being real with myself and it's made my life not so fun <laughs> So this week we're doing Life Cycle of a Butterfly. That will be fun. I am going, I have a couple of books that I'm gonna be reading. What I really need to get ready for is center. So I differentiate all of my center work for my students. And it's honestly been like two weeks since we've done our center folders because things have just, things have just been crazy. My kids go to word work, writing, library, they do tablets. And in each of those centers, they have things that they're supposed to be doing when they're in word work or when they're in writing, they have their center folder. This is just an extra one. I always make extras in case I get new kids so there's not a name, but they have a word work and a writing side. That's what I'm gonna do right now. Unfortunately, I forgot about Cookie Butter Monday. So it's um, double shot on ice Monday. What I usually like to do whenever I have a bulk of things to print is I will write down the pages in my planner. But here's my digital planner and I'll write down the pages that I wanna print and I might do that at home or sometime when I have free time. And then that way when I go to print things, it makes it so much easier. So if I'm sitting here in the classroom, I might just do it on a sticky note. I'm gonna use this time to chat with my friends on um, Marco Polo. That sounded like a sponsorship the way I just introduced that. I love Marco Polo, it has been so nice for me to just be driving in the car and be able to talk to my friends and like keep up with them. I also am considering asking my team next year if they wanna have a Marco Polo instead of group chat because I know some people do that and it's really nice because like messages can't get like mixed up or crossed, you know what I mean? Like you are literally speaking in the Marco Polo. So sometimes, you know, with text messages, there's that like 
gray area where you're like, is she being shady or is she, you know what I mean? So I would just, I think it'd be fun to do a Marco Polo group chat. I think my principal next year has said he doesn't like Marco Polo. That's kind of funny. And I think my principal this year just started using <laughs> Marco Polo. It's so funny, people's preferences. First time I used it, I was like, this is stupid. And I deleted it and then I got it again. And I was like, hold on, I'm ready. I'll just show you what my <laughs> things look like. These are all the things that I need to print. Can you see all that writing on there? You can't really see it. We are going to have our Monday morning message. Thank you. I'm gonna write down on my board before I forget. Before I show you center folder stuff, I'll show you some things that I printed for a small group. When I have my students come to my table, um, my higher ones a lot of times, I'll have them do Rhyme Magic and just practice going through those. And Rhyme Magic has power packs with different um, word families in them. But my other kids, I usually have something else there for them. So some of my kinders will be going through and reading these when they get to my table. And having something at your table ready to go for your small group is helpful because they can do this. They should be able to do this on their own. And if they can't, they can just circle it. So I'll put this in a dry erase sleeve and they can just circle like the ones that are that are tricky and then when I get back to my table I can help them. Does that make sense? <laughs> so I have this on my table ready to go for my kids in small group and then while they're trying to read these words and work on fluency I just walk around and make sure everyone in the room knows what they're doing. So this is from Move Mountains in Kindergarten. I think this is supposed to be for like a teacher I don't know or homework or something and then another one. I really love this pack I got. Oh no she didn't put her name on it. It looks like this. I'll link this for you in the description box. I just printed like four or five copies um, and it gives them like the touch spots and like words to review. So if I wanted to before I left, I could review these words with them at the top, they're sight words. Um, and then I have some nonsense words. This is by a teachable teacher. I'll link this for you. Um, and nonsense words are great and I will actually wanna hear my kids read these. That's just stuff that they'll do when they get to my table. Um, some center folder work we have, reading and then the picture is at the bottom. This is from Miss Giraffe, her phonics bundle. I recommend in like every single video. I will link it for you in the description box. It is expensive, wait for a sale. And then this is by, I don't remember, they're phonics mats. I use these a lot when I just taught first grade. Here's a close up. I'll link these in the description box, holy moly. You know what, I might just make, you guys have been telling me, make a video on your favorite TBT resources. I need to just do that. This is Miss Giraffe, circle the ending. Vowel sound and blends. Here's some more and I, this is a mishmash. A bunch of different resources. This is by Miss Kindergarten. This they will do when they get to writing. It's by Miss Giraffe, they'll do when they get to writing. And we're not focusing on any particular phonics skill, so I am literally just throwing in what these kids need. Sing for the sound, cut and paste, Miss Giraffe, Move Mountains in Kindergarten, Short A Sort, and then a CBCE reading week to week it has always been based on my phonics skill every single week whatever phonics skills we're working on that's what goes in now that we're at the end of the year there's not a whole lot of skills that i'm introducing with kindergarten like there's a couple but other than that we're pretty much done so this is all just practice and what i need for each individual student another really good way to stay on top of what these kids need is using esgi i pull it up on my ipad and i am testing kids all the time i will randomly pull a kid to test if i have a couple minutes and just go over things just to see where they are and i use um, these fidgets and i only have them for a couple of minutes so it's really not bad on them and they don't see it as something like oh my goodness no i'm getting tested this helps get their wiggles out stay on top of what they need using ESGI. It is the one thing that has made my life so easy is using ESGI for my testing. I've talked about it on my channel before. It's so easy, so simple. You have all your data. You can quickly look. You can access it from anywhere. No pencil, no paper. It is wonderful. I'll leave a link in the description box for you for the free trial and all that or a discount code if you want your school to purchase it. Super helpful. I have the gummy bears. I'm gonna put them in here. I laminated the front of this little bear and I laminated the back and I'm gonna put the kids little notes in the middle and I think they're all here today so it works out and I decided I am going to put it on a little ring and that'll be my little gift I think that's sweet <laughs> I think it's I think it's sweet I'm actually really excited about it it's precious okay I just want to share that with you um, maybe I can show you the final product I'll probably film it on my phone hello it is the end of the day <laughs> I filmed zero for you uh, today, um, but my principal did love his little gummy bear gifts. I had him come in and all the kids said like, happy principal's day. And um, he like read their little notes and like got the gummy bears. Kids were excited. So that was, 
<laughs> a big thing that we did today. Today was also a minimum day, so we didn't have math, so happy Monday. I'll see you on Tuesday. Good morning, happy teacher appreciation day. It's past for you, but I hope you felt appreciated today. Oh, I feel so good this morning. I don't know why I'm just in, I'm in a great mood. I left my backpack, my laptop, my iPad, everything here yesterday because I've been just in the habit and for no good reason of going home and or like going home working out, but then just like planting myself at our kitchen island and just like opening up my laptop and just working on stuff. I feel like I have a lot to accomplish today with my kids. We really, really need to work on Mother's Day gifts. We're gonna get to math, we're gonna get to time. Everything is pretty much ready to go too, so I have nothing to prep. All I have to do is make our morning message. I might go chat with a couple teachers this morning too, just for fun. Oh, I'll show my outfit really quickly. I love wearing this dress from Marshalls. I've worn it so many times that the actual like tag um, has come off, so I don't even know the brand. Um, but I love to wear it with these shirts. These shirts are on my Amazon. I wear it with white a lot of time, but I thought today it would be fun to wear it with pink. My new pink Adidas, and I'm wearing earrings by Poppy. I love, love, love this small business. You can use code Maylene15 on your order to save money anytime you order from her. I'll link her in the description box, but anytime you see cute little earrings like this, they are by Poppy, and I love her. Hello, it's the end of the day. Actually did have a really good day today. But it's just interesting because I feel like when you like fully immerse yourself in teaching and you give and give and give and give and give, the end of the day comes, you are, whoo, like when you don't even give yourself a second out of the day, you are just, and that's how I am today. I'm like, I went very, very hard today, <laughs> teacher wise. Anyways, for centuries, like I said, I got started on some of their little notes to their moms. So we're working on that this week. I need to hustle. I need to just like get it done tomorrow because I'm scared some of my kids are gonna be absent and then they won't get it finished in time. I had an IEP meeting this morning. So I actually had a sub for the beginning part of our day. So we didn't do a read aloud, really sad, but we'll get to do one tomorrow. I went by our school library because I do not have a ton of butterfly books. And okay, I wanted to read this one with them. I might buy it for myself. Butterflies, pollinators, and nectar sippers. <laughs> Butterflies, that's the part. I wonder what it's like to be a butterfly. Life cycle of a butterfly. I think they can read this one with a partner. Yeah, first graders who can read that with a partner. Becoming a butterfly. They can read this with a partner. I might read this one to them too. I like this one. I did writing with first grade. That went so well. Someone's talking to you, give them the quiet symbol. Okay, we're learning. I already wrapped up my story in the beginning. My fairy hears a noise and then she's going to go and see that this little tiny fairy is trapped and she needs to save her. And then at the end, they become friends. So you guys have already seen me draw or sketch the beginning of my story. Today I'm gonna to show you guys how I start writing the beginning of my story. So I want whoever is reading my story to be excited from the moment Moment they start reading. I want them to start reading my story and say, oh my goodness, this is so interesting. I want to keep reading. So what I think I'm going to start off with, kindergarten, turn your voices down, please. I think in my story, I'm going to start off with this part over here. This little speech bubble saying what? Ah. Ah. So I think I'm going to do that. And I'm going to use the quotation marks to show that. And I'm going to say, ah. I think I want to name her after my sister, my sister's name is Ariana, so I think I want to name her Ari. So I'm going to say, my, my name is Ari. yeah, I think I'm going to say, ah, Ari heard a scream. What kind of scream should I say? Ari heard a, but like what kind of scream? A quiet scream or a loud scream? Which one should I say? A loud. A loud scream? Okay. You put the little line in the dot. Okay. Skrrr. E. Mm. Go back and check. Ah, Ari heard a loud scream. She got worried. About what do you think she's thinking now? About the little fairy and she didn't know what the fairy heard. Yeah, you're right. She doesn't know it's a fairy at this time, so she might be thinking, what was that? Um, well, someone needs help. Someone needs help. Okay. Ah, Ari heard a loud scream. She got worried. Some... One need someone needs help. help. Okay. Ah, 
Ah, Ari heard a loud scream. She got worried. Someone needs help. When you look at your picture and you look at the sketch that you've already started making, I want you to go through the same process I went through. How can I make this interesting? What are my characters thinking? How are they feeling? What are they going to do? We're going to be storytellers today. So if you need Miss Call to help you ask those questions, I can do that. But the first thing you're gonna do is just think about your story, okay? Okay, I want you guys to be thinking about your story. I'm gonna talk with her first. So in the beginning of this, her story, she hears something or she sees somebody or a cat. What happens in the middle? I love it. So it seems like in the beginning, she is sitting in the park. Your character, do you have a name for her? Alevicent. Oh, wait. Uh, Alevicent. I don't know how to say it. Al Alevicent? No. Maleficent? No. E? Huh? E? E? What's her, tell me her name. Uh, I don't know how to say it. Um, well, just kind of, do you want it to be something eff efficient? Evie. Evie? Why don't you tell me where she was first? Go ahead and make that your first sentence and get us ready for what is about to happen. So Lily and Ellie, what are they doing in the beginning? They're gonna move? Okay, why are they gonna move? Okay, so what do you wanna say for your first sentence to tell me what you just said? Now I want you to tell me in a very interesting way, what happened when this cat, this character came up? I want you to tell me what she was thinking, what she saw, okay? What is he doing, where is he? Right there, getting on the ship. Okay, so okay. cover your mouth when you cough. I don't want your drinks. So Silly was getting on a ship. Where was he going? He was going to Nevada. Like me? Okay. So you can say Silly was getting on a what? Sh it's a ship. Oh, ship. See the water? So you're going to go on a ship too? All right. Silly was getting on a ship. And then we could talk about where he's going in the next sentence. If you need help, let me know. Maybe it's a wild cat. Oh, okay. Tell me what she thinks. All right. Lily and Ellie moved to a new. We're going to use that ew sound when they see the mouth. Sound it out. You can sound all that out. I went to Nevada real life. Okay. I saw. I saw one of the expensive cars. I saw a Lambo. A Lambo. Oh, from. Ooh, maybe one day I'll get a Lambo. Go ahead and tell me where the ship was headed. Oh, it, capital letter, always first. Okay, ready? Collected skr, good skr. Okay, put a band aid on it. Do you help? Keep going. Oh, and actually, in that word, L's going to bring his twin brother. That's a big band aid. The jungle. So Kelly disappeared into the jungle. Why did she do that? I don't know. You don't know? You're still thinking about why? What happens here in the middle? Um, she started crying because she just didn't know what to do. Okay, so she was getting lost in the jungle. She disappeared into the jungle. And she, all of a sudden, she... She started crying because she didn't know what to do. Okay, perfect. So how are we going to introduce Kelly to our readers. What are we going to say? Kelly Kelly was We have to tell them why she's crying. Kelly was crying because she didn't know what to do. Okay, go ahead. Kelly was crying because she didn't know what to do. You got it. Get your mouth ready for playing. There's a blend. Playing. Pull. Yep. Hey. Yes, ma'am. Good job checking your secret. A Y. Yep. She's in the jungle. Oh my gosh, she's so scared. Can you write and tell me that? I love it. I love it. He's a red dinosaur on a beach. It's beautiful. It's perfect. It went so well. Let me get some of their. Uh, stories to read you. Cookie Man was stuck in the jar. He has a plan to shake the jar. Aurora was sleeping in the castle in the ocean. She was confident to hear the alarm clock. Is that the correct use of confident? No, but I love it. Stomp Stop was walking to the beach to build a castle. Me and Nina were having a sleepover. We were playing when we heard a sound. They're becoming actual storytellers and I'm giving them 
the questioning strategies and okay, this is making me think this and kind of asking them, okay, well, what was she feeling? What was she thinking? How can we make this interesting? And it is really nice. I went to the park to read a book, then a cat came and Evie was surprised. Evie thought it was lost. They're just getting started too. Kelly was crying because she didn't know what to do. She was in the jungle crying with nobody. <laughs> What I love about creative writing is the kids actually want here we go, to write more. They want to make their stories interesting. So it's always a nice little treat at the end of the year to do creative writing. Math. I did math with first grade. I think I filmed it. It went amazing. They are. We've only done time for a few lessons. They are. They're killing it. They're doing so well. We even did a little knockout at the end which i found a way to make knockout less um intimidating for my class because they some like three of my kids will sit there and cry if they get knocked out it is what it is and now when they get knocked out there is an opportunity for them to be saved and like come back into the game okay if you've missed a previous vlog knockout has two sides to the screen you put them in two teams and then you either have the person say the time or write the time. There's different knockouts. This is just the time version. They say the time or they write the time. I have them write the time because I want them to practice putting the colon symbol in there. If you get it right and the person next to you gets it right, whoever got it the fastest stays in the game. The other person sits down. If you got it right and the other person gets it wrong, they sit down, you stay in the game. Um, sometimes they let them be, sometimes they let there be ties. Sometimes it'll pop up and just say, oh, you're knocked out and they don't even get a chance and it's just part of the game. Sometimes it'll say, pick a pal and you can save someone. And sometimes it'll say free pass and you just get to go to the back of the line. And then last team standing wins. So eventually all of one team gets knocked out, which they can have a hard time with. So my way around the tiers is instead of waiting for the pick a pal symbol to come up, I, every few turns, I'll say, okay, if you can beat me at rock, paper, scissors, shoot, you can come back in the game. So it's still luck, but it kind of just makes it a little less sad <laughs> for them. Hold up, hold up. Whoa! When my clock is showing two o'clock, the hour hand is pointing at the? Two. Two, and the minute hand is pointing at the? Twelve. Twelve, good. I want you to make it say five o'clock. Ooh, smart thinking. Moving the what? Minute hand. I have to move this minute hand and it's gonna point to what number? Six. It's gonna point to the six. Watch, count with me, ready? Five, 10, 530. 530. 530, oh my gosh, kiss your brain. So smart. Oh my gosh. She to change your time to say 1130. Nice job. They are both correct. But, oh. Yeah. So, yeah, today overall was a really good day. We were just, it's one of those days where I was so busy and now I'm so ready to go home. And also, um, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think a lot of my parents knew that today was Teacher Appreciation Day. And I used to send newsletters out, but then I stopped doing it, kind of forgot for a while. But normally that's something I'll put on our newsletter, like important dates. But our school sent out like, oh, this is not teacher appreciation week, it's staff appreciation week. So it kind of, in my opinion, it takes away from teachers because every like, part of the school has their own special day like there is a day for lunch and cafeteria workers there's a day for principals there's a day for um, librarians there's a day for secretaries there's a day for everybody there's a day for teachers and I think when you say staff appreciation it kind of I don't know it kind of takes away from each individual piece of the staff that's just my opinion and I think if you're gonna do like staff appreciation week, you should say, okay, we're gonna make today, Monday will be for principal, Tuesday will be for secretaries, Wednesday will be for custodians, Thursday will be for cafeteria, and you could even double them up. It doesn't matter. I just think making like a special day for people and just like making those people feel appreciated individually is really important. So that's something that I was kind of a little bit sad about. I did have one student's parent come and like they brought flowers for me and my aide and they brought like popcorn like this but it's not and I wish I could explain it's not about getting things it's just that extra like little boost of like today I just want you to know that you're appreciated like just that extra boost at the end of the year when we're tired could have gotten literally anything it's not like what you get that matters it's just that extra 
just time that goes into making someone feel appreciated. You know what I mean? I think if schools are going to say staff appreciation in order to say that they appreciate all of their staff, I really think they should not use it as like a lazy way to group together, but a more intentional way. Like, okay, we're going to break it down and make sure each individual part of our staff does feel appreciated. Um, but I hope you did feel appreciated on Teacher Appreciation Day, Teacher Appreciation Week. Um, I think that's all I had to tell you. Also, this stuff, zebra popcorn, is so delicious. It is so good. And also this year, I know a lot of people, just uh, teachers in as a majority, just from what I've seen online from the hundreds of teachers that I connect with, a majority of teachers feel like parent involvement is going down. I haven't seen that as much, um, but that is that is pretty high on my priority list. I try to keep really good contact with parents on Class Dojo and stories and all of that. I genuinely do feel like the parents I have this year, I have a majority of parents who are thoughtful and they communicate with me and they do put an extra effort when they see me to tell me things. So. I just wanted to speak, not saying specific, just like as a whole, how it's celebrated. Anyway, that was a long rant. Today was a good day, a really good day. Also, one of my sweet little girls this morning brought me coffee and it made my day. And then when I was drinking it, she was like, Miss Call, is that the coffee I brought you? I was like, yeah, thank you so much. I'm still drinking it. Oh, we started the day talking about books that I got from the library. I read them, a book on butterflies. It's not okay. First book I got, butterfly, butterfly, butterfly. I wonder oh what it's God. like to be a butterfly. Mm. Moth or butterfly? Moth. Butterflies. 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 Where butterflies grow. Where? Amazing butterflies and moths. Butterflies and moths. Butterflies. Becoming a butterfly. Becoming a butterfly. So do you notice a theme? Becoming a butterfly. a butterfly. What do we know about butterflies already? Raise your hand. Do you know something? Raise your hand if you know something about a butterfly. You guys all know something about a butterfly. Turn and tell your friend one thing you know about a butterfly. My turn. Leaders are always learning. We are going to learn some more about butterflies. I have a question. Do you think this book is a fiction or a non-fiction book? It's non-fiction because it's real life and true. I'm going to flip through and we see a table of... Mm -hmm. Remember that word? We practicing. It's hard to remember. Table of contents. Say it. Table of contents. Who remembers what the table of contents in a book does? No, not title. This isn't the title page. This one is the title page. It is a real life and true book. Who remembers what the table of contents does? No, I see page numbers here. What does it do? It looks at the numbers and it tells you what... It does a couple of things. It gives us information about what is in the book and it tells us, <coughs> you okay? And it tells us where to find it. So if I want to read about stage one in the butterfly life cycle, I'm going to go to page four. Do you have to read a book like this in order? No. You don't. You can go to whatever page you want to learn about. I'm going to read it in order because it's my first time reading the book. Stage one. This is our heading on this page. It tells us what it's about. All butterflies begin as tiny eggs. Some butterflies lay eggs okay. while flying. Others carefully lay eggs on leaves and other plants. Did we learn something on this page? Yes. Yes, we read nonfiction books to learn. learn. We read them to learn. learn. What did we learn on this page? Cocoon. No, listen again. All butterflies begin as tiny eggs. Some butterflies lay their eggs while flying. Others carefully lay eggs on leaves and other plants. What they did we like learn? Egg like the plants. Yeah, they, they lay their like eggs on plants. Plants. Good. Like Stage two. Look. It's so pretty. Yeah, it's the skin that it sheds off because they grow so much. When we first got our caterpillars, do you remember they were skinny and small? Yeah. And now they're kind of like fat and chunky and big, huh? <laughs> they're kind of cute now. They're chunky, chunky. They're chunky. They're chunky. And, because, and because they grow so fast and they grow so much, they have to shed that skin. So all those little extra pieces, it's them shedding their skin so they can grow even bigger. And my lizard sheds skin. 
Me too. And snakes shed Yeah, skin. lizards shed skin and snakes shed skin. What do birds shed? Feathers. Feathers. What do dogs shed? Hair. Yeah, their hair, their fur. Yeah, my dog Rex is shedding. Did you know that? Did you know that we actually shed our skin too? Yeah. What? Wow. Yeah, little pieces of our skin come out and our hair falls out every day. Have you ever like pulled your hair and like maybe a little bit came out or you saw yeah. some in your hairbrush? I mean. Yep, every single day. So we actually have two words for a chrysalis. It's called a chrysalis aura. Pupa. Pupa. And we have two words for the caterpillar. It's called a caterpillar. Do you remember the other word? Larva. Larva. Kiss your brain. I'm glad you guess larvas make this splits the pupa shell apart. So when the butterfly is in here, what does it have to do to get out? Pump its body. Yeah, it has to pump its body. Pump it up, pump it up. What does a baby bird have to do to get out? Pump it up, pump it up. Peck. They have to peck, right? Baby birds have to peck at their shell to get out to its wings. The wings expand. Show me expand. Good, shrink. Expand, shrink, expand, shrink. Now the butterfly is ready to fly for the first time. Started a little butterfly chart. That's what? Eggs. Just like what other animals? Birds. Who else can tell me another butterfly fact? Break out of their pupa. Pupa. Good for Who has a good idea about why the chrysalis might be hard? I wonder why. So they can't break it. It is, it's harder for them to break out. They have to pump their, pump their body to get out of that chrysalis. But why do you think it's hard? We haven't learned about it. I just wonder what you think. They're just little and they don't want to be stomped on. Oh. So everything you think inside and they don't get hurt while I they're like, doing their thing. She thinks maybe so everything can stay safe inside while they're doing their thing. Yeah. While they're transforming. Because, because you can't step on the butterfly or anything. <coughs> yeah, so I wonder if the butterfly is inside the chrysalis, can it do anything to defend it? Can it like run away? No. No, it can't really do anything. So the chrysalis has to be. On a tree. Yeah, it might be hanging from a branch on a tree. But the butterfly, when it's inside, it can't really protect itself. That's something to think about. Okay, I want my helper to go to the front of the line and give the quiet symbol. I want my director to start lining us up. And then for our literacy block, I worked with kindergarten, and their stories are absolutely amazing. Here's some clips of me writing with kindergarten, blown away by what they're capable of. And sometimes I get a little bit in my head about, oh, you know, I have to be right there with them, like prompting them. But at the end of the day, like they're in kindergarten so the fact that they can even do some of this stuff with my help is pretty amazing so gotta give them credit she was thinking about her game why was she thinking about her game she thought it would be an amazing game. She thought it would be amazing? Okay, so what do you want to write about that? Um, she was, how was she feeling? She was? She was excited. Say it with me. She was excited. What's the first word? She. She, good. We know how to spell she. I mean, actually, I already read it right there. Go ahead. She, do you remember how to spell ing? I-N-G. Yes, 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 good. Because it was on there. Perfect, I-N-G. Remember we talked about vowels when they're not sure what to say, they're going to say uh? Yeah, but which vowel is it? I don't know. It's going to be an O. Oh, this is the word some. Some pizza. And this O is going to be saying uh. Some. Something at the, is it store? Door. Stop it, please. Door. Door. Good. This says d. It says jur ah. You've got the right letters to spell or, but they're flipped around. Can you double check how to spell or? Oh yeah. Oh, is it I know. O R. Yeah. O R. You got the right letters though. Good. X I. What's the next part? Look at it. Exciting. Nice job. D, and then you need punctuation, and you just wrote it, girlfriend. Yay. I want you to read it to me now. I want to hear you storytelling. The door and 
it said boo. In the plane, it said You're a storyteller. I'm so proud of you. I can cry. I'm so proud of you. Ah, good. Hey. Yes, sir. Ready? Bit centers. I finished up our Mother's Day writing. We still need to get everything put together for the Mother's Day crafts, so you'll see that come together tomorrow. More caterpillar observations. My document camera, kind of, and we looked at them on the board. Our caterpillars do not look the same as they looked on day one. I'm moving a lot. I want you to remember when we first saw our caterpillars, they were very, they were skinny and little and tiny. So we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about the differences. Ready? Oh, they're going to eat that one. Looks like the going one. I think um, the caterpillars are dancing. Dancing? We could sing them a song. What song should we sing them? Um, I think Twinkle, Twinkle. Twinkle, Twinkle. Oh, does everybody know Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star? No. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's sing it. Let's whisper sing it for them. Ready? Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. How I wonder what you are. He's singing up above. And then we did butterfly exploration. And this was something I just kind of came up with. So yesterday I didn't know that I was gonna go to the library and get a bunch of butterfly books. Today I didn't know that I was gonna have stations with them. But it just kind of played out that way and I am in love with the way that it happened. So I had a couple of books in four different places in the room. And then I had one magnifying glass in each group, just one. And then these figurines that I just bought. Um, I have them linked in my Amazon. One of each of these little figurines that I got, these are linked on my Amazon and I put just one in each station so by the end they would have gotten to see, ah, oh, all of them um and one of my little girls was like miss call which one's the head and i was like oh good question so we're going to talk more obviously about what they um what they saw what they observed these i think are really are really neat loved loved having that so then i tried to pair them up strategically i broke them up into four different groups and gave them all a piece of paper and their job was to split their piece of paper into four boxes and write or draw an observation or something that they found interesting. So I'll show you some of the things that they did. I haven't even really gotten a chance to look at them. Some of them had, you know, a harder time than others did, but some of them preferred to write. I feel like some of them you can definitely tell are, are kindergarten, but they still loved it and they were still learning a lot. It was really cool to, really cool to see. And they absolutely loved this activity. And it's one of those things that is so simple and you could literally do it with any concept you're learning about. Give them books, whatever you have, and just have them rotate through and make observations. And they loved it. But like I was saying before, I don't remember which vlog it was. I feel like sometimes my best ideas are things that I don't plan. Because if I had planned this, it would have been totally different. But a lot of times when I'm in the moment, I try to think of ways that I can get them up and moving and talking because all of that is them showing that they're learning, so. so Wait, yeah. did you say heart? Do you know what a gut is? No. It's like your stomach. Yeah. Yeah. Also, tomorrow is Cinco de Mayo. Completely slipped my mind. One of my moms was like, are you doing anything for Cinco de Mayo? And I was like, oh, I didn't have anything planned, <laughs> but I want to message me on Class Dojo and she wants to bring horchata. I feel like overall it was just a really good day. And even my aide was like, today, like this week feels so much better than last week. So I don't know what it is. Maybe because it's a little bit more normal. Maybe because, I don't know. I don't know why. If I had the answers, my life wouldn't be so hard all the time. Good morning. Today is Thursday. We're going to be so busy today. Real busy. I did stop and get some chips and salsa. One of my moms is bringing horchata for today. Other than that, I did submit for my Nevada credential last night. I don't know. Oh, I have something very exciting. I wrote, I wrote a new morning song for us because my kids are still obsessed with Bruno and I cannot get that song out of my head. So I wrote a good morning song with Bruno. This is just me, like I love creating songs. If you guys remember my like first year classroom setup videos, it's when I made our choice rap. When we leave, we have a choice to make what we believe. It becomes what we say, what we say. It becomes what we do. It's up to me, it's not up to you. I'm in charge of me, I'm a go get her. Call me weak, I know better. I make strong choices every day. And when I leave, just watch me, hey, I make strong choices. I don't do it with these kids. I bet they would love it though. I just never brought it back. But anyways, one of my girls softball games last night and I literally sat there 
and I was thinking of the lyrics and I was like, I have to do this. So here's a little sneak peek. It's like a morning song. It's a brand new day, you know, oh, oh, oh. It's a brand new day, you know, you. But I am on my way, and I'm on my way. I am ready and there isn't a doubt in my mind. No doubts allowed in your mind. When I walk in, I know it's my mission to learn. A little sneak peek, isn't it cute? I'm obsessed. These are the kind of things that, that just get me just get me hyped up. I'm feeling good. So far, actually, this week has been a really, really good week. And I want to remember that. I want to remember this feeling because you guys know not every week is like that. It's the end of the day. <laughs> and I am... I'm wiped. Holy moly. I don't know how I do it. Sometimes people are like, Melian, how are you doing this? I don't even... I don't even know. I felt like my head was going to explode today at the end of the day. It was great for them. I was exhausted. Okay, so first of all, they loved the Bruno song. They loved that. I cannot wait till they like know all the words, but we had a lot of fun with that this morning. We talked a little bit about Cinco de Mayo. Um, we talked about how... And actually, we, we I brought it back to like other... Mexican holidays that we've talked about throughout the year um, because today is mostly about like celebrating like Mexican culture. So I reminded them of Las Posadas, which they had forgotten a ton about because it was in December. We talked about Day of the Dead. We talked about how um, the Mexican Independence Day is different from my aide. Also talked a lot about it with them. She showed, showed them more pictures um, of Mexico from when she was there and the kids love anything that she shows them. So that was great. We read a Cinco de Mayo book, watched Coco, which I explained to them is not Cinco de Mayo. It's Dio de, la, Dio de las Muertes. Dio de las Muertes, Day of the Dead. And I explained that it was different, but we we're watching it because of the Mexican culture is why we were watching it. First thing this morning, they just colored sombreros. One of my girls was so excited. One of my girls said, did you know that we're celebrating Mexico today and I'm Mexican? And one of my other little girls said, I'm half Mexican and they were excited. So it's, it's just nice when you have kids in your class to celebrate their culture. And again, one of my girls today was like, Miss Claude, I'm from Cambodia. And I'm like, okay, I need to like learn more about Cambodia. But um, one of my little girls brought in horchata today. Her mom made it, it was delicious. I still have some here. It's not as cold anymore. Brought us mostly finished with um, part of our Mother's Day gifts. These, I cut out this little jar and then their little flowers will go on top. These ones are cool. Uh -huh. Oh, you know, this ball. Oh, <laughs> they're just messy they're just messier they're just messy kids messy children but they're cute so I wanted something that was more like handmade because the other one I just showed you with the jar is more like not really like handmade it's just sweet a nice sweet note so I think I'm gonna work on those Mother's Day things I need to go today and buy gift bags because I don't have any that's something that I need to maybe request next year is just like some plain gift bags or something. I might need tissue paper, I don't know. I'm gonna probably go home and go straight to bed too. My kids come in every day like, Miss Call, is today the field trip? Is today the field trip? And my parents come in and they're like, so-and-so told me the field trip was today. <laughs> oh, that's what you get, that's what you get. Anyways, I went to Dollar General after school yesterday. I, I picked up some ribbon and I'm gonna use this to tie up their Mother's Day gifts. I think this was Katie who I saw tie it up. I was originally wanting to do like a little gift bag and then I was like, I really don't need a gift bag because there's nothing like in there. Like it's just like papery type stuff. I think it was Katie, hold on. Ribbon like this and like this. And I have like some thicker stuff so it'll hold. But I also picked up these pool noodles because I thought it would be so fun to do clock games outside. And what I was thinking was I could cut the pool noodles and they could use them as like the arms of the clock. This is gonna have like time to the hour and then the dice, it'll be like that dry erase dice or something and it'll have like 15, 30, whatever it lands on, they hop to it, that's their hour. Then they roll a dice, they get their minutes and then they go over here hour hand, minute hand, and then they'll build the time. And time to the half hour is not a kindergarten standard at all, but they're doing really good with it. I don't know, I feel like you guys saw all of my, or most of my time lessons are kind of how I teach time. I only did worksheets with my first graders like 
two days just to practice writing it with the colons. Uh, and the rest of it was just like fun, playing, talking, singing, like, and they got it. Like normally time is a lot harder to teach than this. Also, we can practice our new morning song this morning. Okay, I'm in a much better mood. It's only been an hour and a half, but it's been a great morning. Okay, finishing up Mother's Day things. My goal for next year is to just do things early because I sit here and I'm like, Oh, like if I started, like I'll have plenty of time to do it. And then I always end up doing it last minute and I just need to do things early next year. Like I just need to make sure it's done before like they need to go home. These Mother's Day gifts, I think we started them on Monday or Tuesday, but it's taken us all week. And I feel like sometimes people don't realize how much time these things take. Anyways, we practiced the good morning song. They loved it. Uh, one of my girls was like, can you type up the lyrics so I can take them home this weekend? Yes, absolutely. So I might offer it to them. We wrote about our butterflies. I actually liked that we had some larvae still, and then we only had three chrysalis. Turn to the next page they have. This call has to do some math. I need to figure out how many days our caterpillars are. Hold on. Okay, so we are on day 11. So at the top where it says day number, it's not, this is the second, hold on, this is the second time we're writing, but our caterpillars are 11 days old, so we're going to put an 11 like this. All right, we are going to circle the stage that the butterfly is in. It doesn't say chrysalis, what does it say? Pupa. It's the same thing, chrysalis or pupa, but I like that they put pupa because pupa is easier to write. Like yeah, it's a shorter word. It it's pupa. It sounds like pupa. pupa. Are you ready to make some observations? Yeah. Do you, are you curious as to why they're shaking? Do you want me to tell you? Yeah. Because they are trying to scare away a predator. Who's the predator right now? Yeah. Me, I'm the predator. But the reason they're shaking is because they're trying to scare away. They don't know that I am not going to eat them. They think anything that moves them or touches them might eat them. So the way they do it is they shake to scare away a predator. Do you know another animal that might shake something to scare you? A monkey. No. A monkey. A giant. Not a giant. It's an animal and it's a long animal. An alligator. Not, oh, not an alligator. A snake. A snake. Do you know what kind of snake? A bird. No, do you know what kind of snake? A rattlesnake. Rattlesnake. Shake. Their little sh rattle in their tail. And then they hypnotize you. That's a cobra. All right, we have one, two, three chrysalises, and then we have two caterpillars. Let me look up. Let me look up the plural. See, even Miss Call doesn't know everything, and sometimes I have to ask someone who knows more than I do. So I'm gonna ask Google. Pupa. I'm gonna see if pupas is a word. Finger spaces between words. Two larva left. Can you look up there and tell me how to spell the number two? Good. The number two is T-W-O. So we'll say two larva. I guess we need to circle larva and pupa since we have both, huh? Yeah. We should do that. Take your time. I love that you are taking your time. I think we might do centers because they really want to finish filling up their cookie jar and they get mad when we <laughs> can't do centers. So we're gonna do centers. It's crazy because whenever I was um, in college, I was like, how do teachers just like not know what they're gonna do? There's always stuff to get done. There's always a huge checklist of things that we need to do. And sometimes you just need to be flexible and roll with what the day brings you. Um, we're gonna do our clock game at the end. They're very excited about the pool noodles. All right, here's our new book for today. Are you ready for a cover reveal? Yeah! Same or different? Different! You are correct. You are correct, it's different. Saturday, do you see a secret in this word? E-R-I-R, and you are say, er-sat-er-day. Ready, here we go. This morning, Ava and her mother were all smiles. It was Saturday, because Ava's mother worked. 
Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. It is, it's a great day, but why is every Saturday a great day for them? Because that's her only day off. Ava's mother is working Monday, Tuesday, Sunday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. But on Saturday, she gets to spend time with her daughter. With her daughter. So that day is very special to them. That is something that could ruin their day. I wonder what's going to happen next. Readers make predictions. predictions. On the table. As Ava watched, her mother crumpled. Will you crumple with me? You remember when we read Chrysanthemum way at the beginning of the year, and what did she do? She not crumpled. Search with the W. She wilted. Wilted. She wilted. Good job remembering that. I'm really impressed. She wilted, just like Ava's mother. She crumpled. If you were Ava, I want you to think what you would tell your mother if you were Ava. Don't worry, mommy. Ava reassured her. Say me an idea. Is the most important thing the author wants you to know. Also, one of my friends on here, her name is Alicia. She actually donated this book for us. Alicia. Alicia, yep. That is my mom's name. I know, but it's also my friend's name. She dedicated, she um, got this book for us to read. Did you like it? Yeah. I thought it was super, super special. So I want you to think, what is the point of an author, really quick before we get a snack, what is the point of an author writing this book about a day where a little girl and her mom have things go wrong and go wrong and go wrong and go wrong? What would be the point of writing this book? Why do you think the author wrote this? What do you think we're supposed to feel. What do you think we're supposed to know when we read this book? Oh yeah, it is almost Mother's Day. Does this remind you a little bit about your mom maybe? Yeah. And what you like to do with her? That's Saturday, not Sunday. I know, but I love that connection you made. So maybe we would be nice to our moms, maybe. Why else? So maybe we... Helpful. Helpful. Help maybe thankful. Yeah, there's lots of things you can do. All right, book tracker, please, and then we'll go. Fine. That one's fine. Cute. Cute. Me thinking about all the footage that I have to edit this weekend. Oh, I have so much. I'm, I haven't even posted last week's vlog. Okay, so let's keep it short and simple. Friday, oh my gosh, the sweetest thing happened. One of my little boys came in, and he is like the sweetest little gentleman ever. But he came in. And he like walked up to my table and he was like, here, Mrs. Call. And he had roses for me. And I was like, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, my little, oh, my heart couldn't take it. He was so precious. And then another one of my boys walked in and he was like, I have these for you. And he was like trying to dig his hand in there and they were, it was cookies for me and my aide. I haven't eaten mine yet because I kind of wanted to show you. Also, because it's too too cute. They're from like a little um, small shop around here. Oh, a little pencil with my name. And he got our aid one too. But he was like, whenever he, he gave it to me, he was like trying to reach through the side so he could like take it out and show me. And I was like, no, don't touch it. Thank you. Mm, mm, mm. Finished up these little art things. This is Kinder. That one looks kind of beautiful. <laughs> Um, so we finished these up and I need to mat those. I really don't want to stay into it, but I need to stay into it because if I don't stay into it now, it won't get done till later next week. Okay. So I have to do that. We did our butterfly observation journal. We only had three in their chrysalis this morning and then by the afternoon we had four and like one was starting to make its chrysalis. They do it so fast. Someone said I should do a time lapse and I think I, I should next year. Not this year, but next year. I have put to the little figurines over here. And so whenever they come over here to check them out, they can like touch these and play with these over here. And I think that's nice because, you know, they're good about not touching the cup, but to have something to touch when you want to touch, you know, is helpful. How many times did I just say, you know, we did that? Oh, also I'm officially hired. <laughs> I got a text this morning. Um, I told you guys I had to officially apply for the position just because like the way positions, the way, it pos the way my positions work is there has to be a position open before you can fill it. So I officially applied for the position and I officially got the position. It was like the best way to end teacher appreciation week with the job. We went outside and played the clock game 
and it was fun. It was kind of a mess. <laughs> All good things are. Okay, here's the here's the deal. It went great. The problem is it was windy, so the pool noodles kept moving around. It would be great if it wasn't a windy day. And the other problem was I didn't notice, but our like black top was like a little bit curved, so they kept like rolling. The first graders did a really good job with it. Kindergartners needed a lot of help because that's hard for them to like manipulate the hands on the clock, but we helped them through. It was fun. So I had a first grade line and a kindergarten line, and then there was a line for them to throw their little dice. They threw the dice onto the hopscotch, then they hopscotched, and then they moved the hands on the clock, went to the back of the line, and then the person in front went, and it was kind of like a race, but not really a race. They had fun, but about like 10 or 15 minutes into it, I was like, okay, let's go inside before they're like burn out. So they liked it. I would do it again. I would. Oh, we read Saturday this morning. Oh, did I already tell you this? I feel like I talked to you this morning. I did. Okay. Well, that is it for the vlog. Thank you guys so, so much for watching another crazy week in my life. See, the problem is I'm not even going to explain myself. It's just, it's just crazy. It's the end of the year. We have, I think someone told me today, 26 or something days left. It is, it just is what it is. And we're in here. We're having fun. We're making it through the week and that's what we're doing. <laughs> Hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you are watching this. Make sure you like this video if it was helpful. Make sure you subscribe and join our family because so many of you are still not subscribed. So join our family. That way you get a notification. I'm going to be posting lots of fun videos this summer too. I know some of you guys are excited for, I'm rambling. Some of you guys are excited for classroom setup videos. I cannot wait to post them again. I'm actually kind of tired, but I'm sure by the time summer rolls around, I'll be excited to set up another classroom. So stay tuned for all of the fun, amazing things that we're doing. I've got a lot of end of the year stuff coming up. Our countdown is going to be amazing. So make sure you subscribe. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I love you and I'll see you in the next one.